Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, brothers and sisters. Rise and shine and a happy Sabbath to you all. I pray that you've all had a marvelous rest and that you are well rested and awake to join together with, with us all to go in front of the throne of mercy and open our hearts and our souls to our dear Father, brothers and sisters. While David was running away from Saul and he couldn't seek refuge anywhere else and he felt that he needed to speak with God because God was the, the just shepherd who had guided him so far in his life. This is what he wrote in Psalms 57 and I want to use it to welcome you this morning. This is what David wrote in Psalms 57. He said, be merciful to me, O God. Be merciful to me, for in you my soul takes refuge. In the shadow of your wings I will take refuge until the destroying storms pass by. I cry to God most high, to God who fulfills his purpose for me. He will send from heaven and save me. He, he will put to shame those who trample on me. God will send forth his steadfast love and his faithfulness. I lie down among lions that greedily devour human prey. Their teeth are spears and arrows, their tongues like sharp swords. But be exalted, O God, above the heavens. Let your glory be over all the earth. They set a net for my steps. My soul was bowed down. They dug a pit in my path but they have fallen into themselves. My heart is steadfast, O oh God. My heart is steadfast. I will sing and make melody. Awake my soul, I wake, O oh harp and lay. I will awake the dawn. I will give thanks to God, O oh Lord. Among the people, I will sing praises to you among the nations. For your steadfast love is as high as the heavens. Your faithfulness extends to the clouds. Be exalted, O God, above the heavens. Let your glory be over all the earth. With these words, brothers and sisters, I welcome you. And as David says, awake, O harp, and let awake my soul. Let's join together this morning. And let's praise God. Let's join together this morning bring our sorrows what we were going through we've been on this journey together and so let's end it together let's come and go to the throne of mercy um, this morning i'd like to invite you to go into a prayer to start this program with a prayer our kind and loving father it is a privilege to see your face this week to see the wonders that you've done in the lives of us, young ones. That you've made use of our talents. And as you have assured us that it doesn't matter where we find ourselves. You, Father, will be our guide. So we are grateful that you have been our guide so far. 
And we are also grateful that you have been the one seated at the throne of mercy, inviting us to approach this throne and open our hearts for you. And so, Father, this morning, together with my brothers and my sisters, we come before you with an open heart. We come before you because we need the rest that you so desire for our heart. We need it. And so, brothers and sisters, as we usher ourselves into this session, I pray that the Spirit of God encompasses around you, that you experience the rest, the beautiful rest, the beautiful Sabbath rest. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, brothers and sisters, call a friend, text a friend, email a friend, do whatever you can to reach out to somebody and invite them that we have started and they should come and join us. At this time, we're going to hear a special song from our sister Grace Boateng. And then after, we're going to hear the marvelous voice of our bishop, Pastor Amos Mitchell. Hello, everyone. Join me sing, my heart can sing, hymn 632. Can sing hymn 632. Morning, everyone, and I am happy Sabbath. I trust that we're all doing well by God's grace. Um, the um, psalm says that I bless the Lord at all times, so his praise shall continually be my mark. My soul shall make a boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. O oh, magnified, O oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us rejoice the name of God together. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good and greatly to be praised. I'm just excited to be here this morning, and I think that we all are too. Uh, we are also expecting God to help us and to um, just 
be with us this morning as we um, bring our um, prayers and, and our uh, request to him. I'd like to encourage every single person here on the platform this morning, um, 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 whether on Facebook or on YouTube, that whatever your prayer request uh, may be, um, be confident in the Lord that he will do it and that he will answer your prayer request for you. Uh, so without further ado, I'd like us to um, just read a Bible verse uh, that I think that will encourage all of us to be uh, to trust and have faith in the Lord because the fact that God uh, is more than able to answer our prayers for us. And the test that I'd like us to um, focus on this morning as we pray together is found in Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20. And we are told there that uh, now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power that is a work within us. And so because of the fact that God has given us power, we are all able to overcome. Because of the fact that God has given us power, irrespective of the trials and tribulations that we face every single day in our lives, we're still gonna be able to overcome. And so let us be confident in the fact that God has assured us that we can be confident in him. And so at this moment in time, I let us to start the prayers. Uh, uh, but before then, uh, let, 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 let's pray and, and you know, we, we'll get straight to the prayers. Dear God, we thank you for the fact that you've assured us that whatever we ask or request for, you have given us that power to be able to do what we're requesting of you. And that if there are any issues or problems that we've been faced with, you have made us uh, more than uh, conquerors of God. So thank you for that. As we pray, hear us, O oh Lord, in the mighty name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Okay, so we've got our first prayer request from um, Pastor Kwame Sapon, and he's saying that he requests um, 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 prayers for his father. Uh, he recovered from a stroke last year and suffered um, memory loss. Uh, and he's thanking God that he's doing better but he, he still wants uh, God to help his father with improvement so that he can get um, back to normal uh, in terms of his memory. Uh, so we've got that prayer request from Kwame. And then we've got a second prayer request from um, Eden, Eden Wahema. Uh, and she's saying that she's requesting a prayer uh, number one, for each and every one of us to become more like Christ and do what he expects of us. Uh, number two, a prayer that God helps us to not focus on the sins of others in need, but rather to help them as Jesus did. Okay, uh, let's pray, let's pray. Our dear God and Heavenly Father, but we thank you that you are a mighty God. We thank you that you are a powerful God. And this is why you have assured us that we can, you can do more than we even ask for, God. And when we look back in the past, how you have brought us thus far, 
we can testify that you are indeed a powerful God who can help us in the midst of our struggles, in the midst of our issues, in the midst of our burdens, in the midst of our predicaments, oh God. And so Father in heaven, at this moment in time, because of the confidence that we have in you and faith that we have in you, I'd like to commit uh, Kwame, Father, into your hand. Oh God, pastors, um, Father, into your hand. I pray and I, and I thank you that uh, last year he was he was at the hospital, and now um, he's, he's doing better. Uh, but we would like you to help him to get his uh, memory back fully, oh God, so that he can return to normal fully. And Father in heaven, I'd also like to um, bring, uh, bring forward to you the prayer request of our dear sister, um, Eden, as well. Um, I pray that you would help her, uh, her that, that, that you would help us as she has requested, oh God, that you would help us to know you better, oh God, that you would help us to uh, know you for ourselves, oh God, and that um, apart from that, we would also not look at the faults in the sense of, of other people, but rather we would encourage them and build them up, oh God, so that we can all make it to your kingdom together. Father in heaven, I also pray for her herself, oh God, um, she could have asked for anything else, but instead she to, she she chose to do an uh, intercessory prayer on the behalf of us all. So dear God, help her with her request as well. In Jesus' mighty name, Amen. Okay, so the next prayer request is from. Uh, is for uh, darling Jack, darling Jack, and uh, she, I believe, is um, asking that we pray for her son, um, Olivier, that he will give his heart back to God and get his life in order. So our dear sister Darlene is asking for prayer requests for her son. And then our dear sister um, Wina Abusa is also requesting that God should grant her um, divine uh, discernment and guidance in helping her make the right decisions. So some um, major factors in her and 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 um, um uh, also some um okay she wants God to help her to make the um right decisions on some major factors in her personal life um and then we've got another one um from our sister Annie and she's requesting that. Uh, we have that that what we have learned um, during this camp meeting will permanently stick with us, and that we will be able to practically uh, use it to improve our service to God. Okay, let's wait. Let's wait. Our dear God and Heavenly Father God. I let like you once again, based on the fact that we have faith and confidence in you, and we have the assurance that you will do it when we ask. We would like to, at this moment in time, bring the son of our dear sister, um, darling, into your hand, um, Father in heaven. She, 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 she prays that her son, uh, Olivier, will uh, make the U-turn and return back to you, O oh God. And so, God, we pray that you will touch his heart 
that you would touch his mind and that you would uh, convict him with your Holy Ghost to make the turn around in his life and return to you. Father in heaven, I would also like to um, bring the request of our dear sister, uh, winner, into your hands as well, God. And Father, she's seeking for um, spiritual uh, discernment so that she can be able to um, make the right choices in her life, oh God. Um, and so, dear God, I pray that you guide her, oh God, in everything that she does, oh God, that it will all be to your glory and to the testimony of your name. Father in heaven, I'd also like to commit our dear sister and into your hands as well, God. She, she is, um, at this moment in time, uh, interceding on our behalf, oh God, that you would help us to not only come and listen to the songs and just pray prayers and just listen to the sermon and then go back to normal world, but rather instead what we have learned this week will um, permanently stick with us so that we in turn will be able to live the lives that are in harmony with your precepts and your laws and your commandments. We ask you these minimal blessings. In the mighty name of your son, Jesus Christ, so we pray. Amen. In it. Okay. Uh, so the next prayer request uh, is from our sister. Oh, okay. Uh, the, the next prayer request is from our, our sister, uh, Ellen Deborah. Uh, she, she's asking God to take control of her upcoming academic results, uh, which are very essential, which are very vital. Uh, and then, um, and, and then, uh, we've also got one from, uh, Davidson Kwabner. He's also requesting God to help him in his spiritual life. He needs his strength as he do as he does the work of God. Um, so, uh, and then one more. Uh, we've got our dear sister Esther Brefo as well. Who's, who's saying that she's got two prayer requests. The first one is that God should guide her and protect her family and friends. Uh, the second one is that God should um, protect her through the final months of university. Okay, let's pray. Once again, Father, we come to you in boldness and in confidence, O oh God. We know that you are an almighty God. And because of your might, you are able to take care of any request that is being asked for, God. And so, dear God, Father in heaven, I'd like to petition to you the request of our dear sister Ellen. Uh, she is asking you to help her with her academic results, oh God, which are essential and which are vital to her life, oh God. And so, dear God, we pray that you would help her in terms of her results. Father, I also um, bring to you the request of our brother uh, Davidson as well, oh God, 
He's asking you to let him grow spiritually, oh God, that his life and everything that he does with his life will be in harmony with what you want us to do as Christians, oh God. Heavenly Father, I would also like to ask you to help with the request of our dear sister Esther. Firstly, she's praying that you would help her um, friends and family, oh God, by, by, by guiding and protecting them, oh God. And so, dear God, that leads us to the second prayer point in which Esther is asking that you would help her with the final uh, um, um, moments, the final months of uni, oh God. Please let her be successful as well. We ask you all of these in the mighty name of your son, Jesus Christ, that we pray. Amen. And amen. Okay, uh, so, so, uh, we've got your sister Petra, who is asking us to pray for her boyfriend, uh, who is sick, and his sister, who, who is also sick as well. Uh, and then we've got your sister Peter again. Um, she's asking prayers for herself also, that God will help her in her life and give her more opportunities in her future. And then we got another prayer for uh, our dear sister Anima. Um, she's, she's requesting that we pray for the young adults who act who are actively participating in the church. That God will continue to bless them and give them strength, faith, and zeal to keep on serving. In love. Okay, let's wait. Uh, I just like to ask to know before we pray that this will be the last group of prayers that we pray. Uh, but whatever your prayer requests are, I believe that God will always help you out when you also pray to Him. Uh, on your own as well. Um, so even though we were not able to pray for your request as as as, as um, we are almost out of time, I believe that when you pray so God can also help you as well. So let's pray. Our dear God and Heavenly Father Bob, I like to thank you for the prayer so God. Um, Father in heaven, I'd like to, at this moment in time, uh, commit um, our dear sister Peter into your hand, oh God. We're praying for her life. We, we're asking that you bless her in all that she does and that you give her more opportunities for her future, oh God. Father in heaven, in a very special way, are we committing um, both her boyfriend and her boyfriend's sister into your hand, oh God. We know you are a mighty healer and that all you have to do is just to speak the word and all will be well. And so Heavenly Father above, we solicit, we pray, and we ask that you would lift up your hand Stretch for your hand and touch and mend any broken parts of the body of these two individuals that we're praying for. And then, Father in heaven, 
we are also praying for our dear sister um, Anima um, um, request as well, God. God in heaven, we pray, we petition before you that you would keep on encouraging those who are working hard, who are um, serving you with, with all of their heart, with all of their mind, with all of their body, with all that they've got, and you continue to give them the passion and the fervor and the zeal and the commitment to continue to do what you're doing. We ask you these and many more blessings in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Be assured. Amen. Thank you very much, Pastor Amos, for allowing God to use you this morning to lead us to the throne of mercy. God bless you and your family. And for everyone who was writing down their sorrows, what is deep within them, I pray that God will touch you where he needs to touch you. And for those who were not, we were not able to read out your prayer request, do not feel disheartened. Just keep putting it down. And throughout the day, there will be people praying for you. And the rest that God wants to give to you, I'm sure you will receive it by the end of this week. God bless you. I hope you are all hungry, brothers and sisters, because the morning manna is about to be served. Our pastor Nicholas is in the kitchen cooking it up together with the Holy Spirit. And I pray that by the end of today's session, you will go back refreshed, full with the Holy Spirit and with the word from our Pastor Nick. But before he comes, we will give a chance for us to sing and also to listen to our theme song one more time. And after that, the voice that you will hear comes from our dear Pastor Nick.
Happy Sabbath, happy Sabbath, happy Sabbath. I am so glad to, to come your way with another devotion this blessed Sabbath morning during the first virtual Egacom Camp meeting 2020 with the general theme, Hope in Spite of Hopelessness. You've heard so many messages this week. You've heard inspiring music this week. And we've prayed a lot. And I believe that the Lord is still in the process of being wonders and miracles in our lives. And I want to thank God for giving all of us such an opportunity, for giving us this technological development that we can still meet in spite of the pandemic. And I want to thank the committee that indeed they chose me as one of the speakers, and especially those at the backstage. You guys are doing great work. So may the Lord bless you. May the Lord empower you. May the Lord give you special wisdom to help in proclamation of the gospel gospel to the world that is dying indeed my friends this morning's message is entitled hope for the restless hope for the restless and thank you everyone who has participated up to now let us have a word of prayer dear lord this is your moment to give us hope in jesus name amen Friends, I'm reading from the New King James Version, Matthew chapter 11, verse 28 to 30. Matthew chapter 11, verse 28 to 30, from the New King James Version. Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lonely in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. You see, friends, hope for the restless. This pericope is a fascinating invitation by Jesus for humanity, for a world that looks tired, a world that is dying. One needs rest when he or she is depleted of the energy, the burden and loses the intensity to carry on or to move forward. You see, rest is crucial and critical in the life of the creatures of God. And no wonder God offered us the seven day Sabbath so that we can have a rest, a day to commune with him, a day to switch and unplug from all the worldly things and focus on renewal and restoration and replenishment. Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. You see, in Matthew chapter 11, verse 28 to 30, Jesus invites everyone, not just me, not just you, but everyone, all who labor and are heavy laden. My friends, when you look at the Greek words used for labor and heavy laden, they can also mean people who are tired as a result of taking on a difficult endeavor. The interpretation even goes further to mean that those who are emotionally fatigued and discouraged, those who want to give up, those who have lost heart and have been caused to carry the burden for too long. You see, in the context of Jesus' audience, the message that Jesus gave to them, they understood or they were in a situation where they were made to carry the oppressive demands of the religious leaders according to their interpretation of the Mosaic law, the, the economic oppression, those people, the Roman taxation, among other things. They were burdens to the audience. They were burdens to the audience of Jesus' message. And these things made the people restless, hopeless, and dejected. You see, restlessness seemed to suggest the quality of being ceaselessly moving or active. Sometimes a lack of patience or irritating with anything that causes delay. You see, the audience of Jesus we're looking forward to a day of liberation, a time of freedom. But all they could lay their hands on was restlessness and hopelessness. What has caused you to be discouraged? What has caused you to, to, to want to give up? Are you feeling restless at this moment? When, is it when we labor and are burdened, we tend to become restless. And I know one way or the other that we have all had restless night before. And you see, you cannot sleep. And that is why it's restless. You, you tend not to get a good rest. 
my friends, when we are restless, we move ceaselessly but without productivity. Why is that? When we are restless, we what? We move ceaselessly but without productivity. Why? Because our hopes and dreams and aspirations and desires and opportunities have been crushed. Crushed by a trusted friend, suppressed by family and culture, oppressed by society and obstructed by the church. And I believe that somebody is reminiscing and contemplating about that career which seemed not to be a fulfilling one. The racism even in your workplace and in the church. Friends, I think somebody is contemplating, contemplating and reminiscing that crazy and abusive relationship or marriage. Sometimes you, you look at the situation that you find yourself in. I guess somebody is recalling and pondering over that educational challenges and failures, the prolonged and the generational family disputes, the financial challenges, physical health, the clicking of that website, substance and drug abuse all going on, the, the experience of depression, anxiety, the pain. The trauma of being abused, coupled with a struggle with one's own sexuality and spirituality. Oh, and, and the torture at the hands of our loved ones, the people that you trusted and looked up to, who manipulated and exploited and then condemned you. You see, all these things make us sick, restless and hopeless and wanting to give up. Why? Because we are tired. Tired of the pain, the struggle, the discrimination, the judgmental mentality, the exploitation, the religious hypocrisy, the condemnation and hiding behind the mask, the pretense. We are no more genuine people. You see, sometimes it may not be you who is experiencing these restless situations. It may be our parents, siblings, friends, or our own bodies, you know, wives, husbands, children, colleagues people who are close to you and we tend to experience the effect but my friends you don't have to give up and i just want to borrow some sentence from one of our preachers that hold on a little longer hold on a little longer try to smile lift up your head and keep moving forward step by step moment by moment one day at a time because your redemption is closer why because jesus is calling you to offer you the rest and the hope that your heart yearns that your heart desires the hope that you test and crave jesus is calling you jesus is inviting you jesus is offering you the chance for a new beginning a new revival transformation reformation and a new hope you see hope is an optimistic state of mind that is based on an expectation of positive outcomes. Expect with confidence and to cherish a desire with anticipation. And I love what, what one of the books says that the hope is about the confidence that by integrating God's redemptive acts in the past, okay, we're trusting human responses in the present. So we look at what God has done in the past and then in the present situation we trust god and when we do that the faithful will what we experience the fullness of god's goodness both in the present and in the future no wonder the hymn writers declare that we have this hope that bends within my heart hope in the coming of the lord my hope is built on nothing less one author says than jesus blood and righteousness I dare not trust in the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. You see, I, I, I heard that hope, someone said hope means that you, you have to hold on to the promises every day. And I want to add this, that hope means that he is our only path to eternal rest. Jesus is our only path to eternal rest. Feeling restlessness, Jesus is our only hope. He is our only path to eternal rest. His rest, his hope, is not just about the future, but the present as well. Not just physically, but emotionally, physiologically, psychologically, financially, education-wise, all aspects of our lives. Holistic rest, holistic hope from Jesus Christ. You see, I, I can share a testimony with you that when I went to Newport, this is, 
a story that sometimes I remember and it's very funny to me that my first exam, my first test in Greek language, I had 37% and I, I say 37% is a fail. My friends, on that day, I asked myself that God, have you really, really called me? Because I didn't choose to be a pastor. You called me. So have you really, really chosen me? 37% is a fail. And you see, nobody may understand this story, but I understand it. I was devastated because if I'm going to pass Greek, if I'm going to move on, then I'll have to pass Greek. 37% from a start. That is discouraging. But my friends, I didn't give up. I said, God, if you have indeed called me to share the good news, do something. Do something. And guys, I lifted up my head. And at the end of the year, at the end, the final exam came. I tried my best. And by the grace of God, the hope that I hung on to, I held on a little longer from 37% to 90%. You see, at that moment when I had that 37%, I was wretched. I was discouraged. You see, this story may seem funny because somebody may not understand my story. And the same way, sometimes, Nobody understands your story. Nobody understands your story. Only you. Only you know what you are going through. Only you know what is happening to you. The pain, the struggle, the discouragement. Only you may understand. And that is why Romans 7, 24 to 25 says, Oh, wretched man that I am, who would deliver me from this body of death? I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Oh, miserable young woman. Oh, miserable young man. Oh, miserable adult, who will deliver you? And I, indeed, praise God that Jesus Christ accepted to deliver us. He calls, come to me, all who are tired and restless, and you have been caused to keep on carrying that baggage of restlessness. Come to me, and I will give you rest. Why does Jesus qualify to give us rest? Because he is not just our creator and redeemer, but he has gone through all that we are going through. And that is why the songwriter say, oh, so are you weary and troubled? No light in the darkness you see. There's light for a look at the Savior and life more abundant and free through death into life everlasting. He passed and we follow him there. Look upon Jesus. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Why? Because there is power in the blood. Power in the blood. Do you want to be free from the burden of sin? Would you or evil a victory win? Would you be free from your passion and pride? Come for a cleansing at Calvary's tide. There is power in the blood. There is power in the blood. Power, power in the blood. Would you do service for Jesus, your king? There is power in the blood. Are you still feeling restless? I want you to think and reflect on what your situation may be. You see, the cross of Calvary was about liberation. The blood shed, the pain suffered, the agony, the stress, the depression, the, the strife, the wounds, the slap, the intense, the shock, the nail through the wrist, the, the thorns on the head, the denial of close friends, the torment, the, the spicer, the cry. All was about Christ Jesus liberating us. The foundation of that liberation is love and hope. Friends, you see, it is interesting that Jesus invites us. He invites us on a personal level to have a personal relationship with him. And I would like to present to you that accept the call of Jesus this morning. Acknowledge your situation and start building relationship with Jesus Christ. And then surround yourself with people who will pull you up, not pull you down. When you go into those moments of despair, those moments of discouragement. Just as one of my mentors says, Wintley Phipps, Wintley Phipps says that it is in the quiet crucible of your personal private suffering that your noblest dreams are born. And God's greatest gifts are given in compensation for what you've been through. For I know that your dreams will come to fruition after all these struggles. Why? Because your decomposition story is fused with the story of Jesus in the tomb. And your rottenness is amalgamated with the resurrection narrative of Lazarus. Even if you are dead, Jesus can raise you up. Take 
my yoke upon you. You see, friends, there's no more time. I would have told you about the yoke that Jesus is talking about, that there are two animals in the ancient days where this yoke is carved wool to cover the, the neck of the two animals to join them together so that these animals will not feel any discomfort. And what happens is that the first animal, the first beast, usually an ox, is an a seasoned ox, an experienced ox. And that is joined with a new ox, a new animal, a new young, inexperienced and naive. And here Jesus is trying to exchange this yoke with us that Jesus is the experienced, the seasoned man, the seasoned person who can take us through our trouble. For us, we are young and naive and inexperienced. But when we feel with Jesus and we live in him and he lives in us, my friends, we go through the struggle together. Jesus goes through the struggle with us. He encourages us when we are discouraged. He goes through the pain with us. Do not let your past failures dictate your journey ahead, my friends. Renew your mindset. Why? Because there is hope for the restless. Why are you stopping yourself? You failed, so you stop. You stop because they said you cannot do it and you don't deserve it. Really? Are you sure? Are you becoming who they want you to be rather than being your unique self? Are you heeding to those voices? saying that you're a total failure. Come on, you are not a failure. Don't stop yourself. You are unequaled and unparalleled. Be you, be your authentic self, be you, be the real you. Be, don't succumb to their you, their version of you, but be that powerful, that strong, that broken you, that crazy you, because you are fearfully and wonderfully made by God. My friends, today is a new beginning. And I want to encourage you. That's Jesus' calling. Will you respond to the call of Jesus? If you want to respond to the call of Jesus, I want you to lift up your hands wherever you are and then bow down your head for a word of prayer. Because Jesus is seasoned. He's the experienced ox that is going to take us through the journey. Let us pray. Lord, we have come to you with restless people, restless souls. It is our prayer, Lord, you redeem us. Take us through the journey and grant unto us hope. Your hope that surpasses all understanding. I don't know what my friends may be going through, but Lord, whatever their situation may be, please attend to them. Speak to them. Share a moment with them so that we can be delivered. Because we know the fall of Jericho was the redemptive moment for Rahab. So today, let somebody's Jericho fall. Let somebody's chain be released. Thank you so much. In Jesus' name, amen.
Now let's have a word of prayer. Dear Lord, as you call us to come to the garden alone, my friends and I have responded to come to you. So may the Lord bless you and keep you, my friends. May the Lord make his face shine upon you. May the Lord lift his countenance upon all of us and grant unto us his peace that surpasses all understanding. May the Lord be with us throughout our struggle, throughout our restlessness. May he give us hope wherever we find ourselves at home at work, at church, wherever we find ourselves. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, amen. Amen, amen, and amen. Thank you very much, Pastor, and thank you very much, our dear sister. Indeed, Jesus is the seasoned ox who we has built up experience in the year, carrying us to where we need to be. And indeed, he invites us to come to the garden alone with him so he will show us where we ought to be. And thank you very much, and God bless you all. Brothers and sisters, yes, yes, thank you very much for what you did yesterday. Yesterday, we were able to show that indeed, as young people, we are committed to this ministry of sharing the good work with the rest of our friends and family. And so, as you all know, as we, we were gratefully informed yesterday, there is a GoFundMe page where our, there is a GoFundMe page where look at the increase, guys. Let's keep on donating. I have gratefully said that our young people are even stronger than the 2,000 that we've go marked that we've placed on our mind. I believe that we will hit 3,000. If you know that we will hit 3,000, let me let me see you type an amen to that. Yes, this is how you do it. You see it down on the screen, how you donate. Please feel free to share with your friends, share with your family, family members, anybody that you come into contact with, share it with them because the good news needs to go to everyone, but we cannot do it with empty pockets and empty hands. We need the hand of each and everyone to be on deck. So every little helps, just like how Tesco says it, every little helps. So please join, jump on, on, on GoFundMe and type in Agacom Youth. Everything will sh jump up and then please donate and share the link with somebody else. If you want to also do it through your church or anything, please feel free to con or contact them, but make sure that the funds reach us. Thank you very much. Also going on. Tomorrow, tomorrow, we've got a wonderful morning devotion with our pastor, Japheth. We will be coming back again at 5.30 a.m. Please come and invite a friend also to join us so that we will enjoy a wonderful meal. Another pastor coming right up to cook it for us. So I want you to invite somebody so that we will join together and we will have a good time and grand time with our pastor Japheth and have a wonderful morning manner with each and every one. So tomorrow, our pastor Japheth will be here to share the morning manner with us. Well, today, as you all know, even though it is virtual, it doesn't mean that we're still going to ignore certain things. No. Right from 9.30 a.m. British time, and th that means 10.30 
AU time. We are gonna have our summer school. I know that the team has the, the, the team has planned something wonderful for us. And so please come, let's have a grand time with each other from this morning, 9:30 a.m. If you are over in the UK, but if you have crossed over the border, then at 10:30. We are going to have a grand time with each other, having a lovely summer school lesson with each other. But guess what comes after the summer school? Yes, our pastor, Dwayne Fraser, is going to share the main meal with us. He will be here to cook it with us. He will be here to share the wonderful word with us. So please do make time out to join us after our summer school that our, our pastor, our dear pastor, Pastor Dwayne Fraser, will be here to cook the main meal with us. But not only that, at 3 p.m. UK time, 4 p.m. EU time, there will be a health talk, a natural health talk by our Mrs. Natalie Nash. She will be here to share some amazing words with us. I'm telling you, brothers and friends and family, today we are in for a full meal. We are in for a full course meal. There will be some wonderful words that she will be here to share with us. The Zoom ID will be there for everyone who is capable to join in so that if you have any questions, anything, we can contribute with each other and share with each other. So at this afternoon, 3 p.m., come let's enjoy and have a grand time with each other one more time and not only that yes we mentioned about the wonderful virtual concert if you've got a grand voice like my boy malcolm or if you sing like our sister Akos, or if you've got any other talent that you want to share well you know where you ought to be at 5.30 p.m. That is when our virtual concert will be starting. Please note that the Zoom ID will be there. Come, let's bring our talents straight up to God. Well, you know, for everything, there is an end. That is why at exactly 12 p.m. today, the end will come to the open the openness that we've opened, the doors that have been opened for each and everyone willing to come and share their talent. Remember, slots are very tight, but we want to try and squeeze as many talents in as possible. And so please, 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 please make sure that you type in your name or make sure that you um, send something to our brother Malcolm. Let him know that indeed, you are ready and willing to share your wonderful talent with us through this virtual medium. This is a one-time event. Make sure that you send in something and make sure that you have a good standing internet. Make sure that you wear something formal. Don't go and wear your um, underwear and come and sit on there. No, please refrain from those things. Yes, we are home, but don't be that comfortable at home. Make sure that you wear something classy, something formal. Come and represent, come and represent. And get your cameras from the beginning on point so that we can enjoy it very much. And make sure that your name is typed in accordingly. Yes, if your name is Kwesimanu, write Kwesimanu and let us know. Please don't just leave your name on. You don't, we don't want to know that you have an iPhone 7 or an iPhone 11 or iPhone Pro. We just want to know who you are and where you are from. So come, let's join together and have this grand time at this Edgar Conf. First Egam Youth Virtual Concert. We are going to enjoy. I've got my dancing shoes all sharpened up. I'm going to dance and enjoy myself at 5.30 p.m. So please come, let's enjoy and have a grand time with one another. Well, let me remind you just before we jump off that the GoFundMe page is right there and our brother Jeffrey has got something that he wants to share with us right now. Ladies and gentlemen, dear friends, dearly beloved, welcome to the first 
Ega conversion cam meeting. And more more kwa ba ya ega conversion cam meeting. And most especially, welcome to the youth sessions. You could have been anywhere in the world, but you here for us, and we appreciate it. I would like to bring to your attention the setup of the Egacom Youth Fund, which will help us to do more of these events, do more than we have done in the past in a broader and better way. And we would like to reiterate to you to go to our GoFundMe link to share your donation, to share anything you would like to give in the setup of this fund, and in order for us to reach our fellow youth and ourselves in Europe and beyond. And at the same time, this will also be our avenue for collecting all our gifts, all our offerings, doing our Friday testimony service, and also doing our Sabbath divine service. We'd like you to give so that in this season of hopelessness, the Lord will open opportunities for you and me, and that we will still have hope as we have hope to move forward. Amen. Amen indeed. Thank you very much for being with us this morning and having a grand time with us this morning. Well, brothers and sisters, rush into your bathroom, just shape yourself up very well, and join us as exactly 9:30 so that we will continue on and have a grand time with one another we have a good time with one another but just before we go and shape ourselves up and shave a little bit so that we come back and enjoy the wonderful summer school moment let's have a word of prayer with one another loving father thank you for such a wonderful morning manner that you've delivered for your children lord we are full but yet still we are craving for more because we sense that we cannot go throughout this life without hearing your goodness, hearing your love, and hearing about your love. And so, Father, I pray for each and everyone who was able to take part in this morning. For all those who wrote down their prayers and those who were not able to uh, come on or not able to even write fast enough, Father, I pray that you know the words of our hearts and you know the words of our sorrows. Father, I pray that you touch us in our innermost part and heal us and teach us and place us as where we need to be. But Father, I also pray for us as we are going to prepare now. Pray for the next team that will be joining us and taking lead in the programs. Father, let us have a grand time today. And most importantly, let us have a good rest. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen. A happy Sabbath to you all. God bless you all. God bless you and God bless you. And remember our GoFundMe page. Please donate. Don't forget. Please donate. God bless you. And please join us at 9.30.